the, what led me here to this award ceremony is um, some of the things that I did in the late 80s, 1980s. It was a kind of heady time. Um, we, um, in Southern California, a lot of the universities were already working together with the San Diego Sewer Computer Center, and we decided jointly to start a regional network. And um, with all of our partners at the universities, we obtained some big NSF money at the time and put together a big fast network that involved T1 lines, 1.544 megabits per second, which today isn't even a fast DSL line, and 56 kilobit connections to campuses that were considered to be high performance, super fast. Vendors didn't even know what we should do with them because nobody had that much data. Um, as a result of that, we you know, I'm a person, I came from the phone company, so I like to have service that worked. I like to make my customers happy. And um, we were really pressed at the time because there was this um, idea that the internet was only for academics and government. And, but we were having a lot of commercial cus customers come to us and act, want to be able to use the internet for conversing with their people at universities and as well as other companies around the US. So we worked with another firm, a couple of firms, PSI and um, UUNet, and together the three of us formed something called the Commercial Internet Exchange. And when we did that, that was the first time ever that commercial traffic was able to pass through the internet, and that was in 1991. So it was um, quite, a, quite an adventure coming from a very academic bent to actually making it a commercial endeavor. Well, obviously the kicks was one of them, um, of, of actually being able to legitimately use the internet for commercial traffic, because it was huge. I mean, you can't even imagine today not using the internet from your cell phone or from your computer, in your business, at home, wherever you are. And back in the 80s and 90s, you couldn't do that. You could only go to certain places. So that was a huge kind of seminal um, change in the internet face at that time. Also, we did stuff like we were the first ones to offer dial-up internet before, um, you know, we, there was all of these old school services out there, but a lot of our uh, customers wanted to be able to dial up, so we got modems and we hacked them up and allowed people to dial up into the internet, which sounds really crazy today, right, because who uses dial-up anymore, but um, that was very um, edgy at the time. We um, worked with uh, folks up in LA who were doing a, a network as well and uh, John Postel was leading that and we, he and I together decided to purchase Cisco routers and Cisco at the time was a little itty bitty startup company in a warehouse somewhere in the Bay Area in California and that year when we placed, when we placed our order from SurfNet with Cisco it was 10% of their gross revenue for the year. And they didn't know how to fulfill the order because it was the biggest order they ever got. So, you know, you look now at Cisco, who, which has, you know, streets of <laughs> buildings. And you think back at those times when Cisco was this little tiny company. So there was a lot of, a lot of changes at the time that we were involved with. I actually, in weather terms, I think the Internet is sunny. You know, every now and then, I'm a Californian, right? So it's always sunny except the 10 days a year where it's crappy. And um, so, you know, there's going to be times just like California where, it th where it's cloudy or stormy. But generally speaking, I think it's sunny. The power of the Internet is so amazing. You know, every day I go, it's just so amazing that, you know, when you want to look something up, no matter where you are, you pick up your phone, you, pick, you sit down at your computer or your tablet, and boom, you have all the information you ever wanted right there at your fingertips. Um, I just don't know, you know, like there's a lot of turmoil about different aspects of it, but the interesting thing with the internet, if you look at the evolution of it, is that things have always sort of worked the right, their way out. It's a, sort of more like a um, communal space and people find ways around the problems that will occur. So I'm, a, I'm a, all about lemonade, so <laughs> I think it's a really sunny future. Concerns, I don't have a lot. I mean, I think the, you know, some of the 
work that I've been doing recently um, is trying to encourage older adults, the 65 plus age group, to use the internet more than they do now. Um, it's a real problem for the older adults because, you know, once you get out of the workforce, you know, the, we're not, the people in that age group, they're not digital natives like you guys are, you know, where you grew up with computers and cell phones and all that stuff. You're, you're used to that. But for people who are digital immigrants, it's a much different um, situation. And trying to keep um, abreast of the craziness and the change, the pace of change in the internet today is very hard for a lot of people who don't have tech support and, you know, you know, or think that it's okay to keep a computer for 10 years <laughs> before you throw it away uh, and things like that. So I think one of my, probably my biggest concerns now is to make sure that we have the infrastructure in place to make sure that people can continuously use the internet as long as they are able to do so. I guess my hope for the future of the internet is it still just keeps on keeping on and you know it, it growing we can get into more of the countries that have really been uh, had some um, disadvantages of getting on the in online because of infrastructure issues. Um, also in the US I think in particular I'd really like to see um, there be real internet speeds, the kind of thing that Google is doing now of putting a gigabit in. Um, so we can actually make some massive strides forward in the types of applications we use and the, and the ways that people interact with each other. It's a wonderful, wonderful tool. You know, I guess the big thing now is the transition of the internet from the US government. Um, out to some other parties to, to for the governance aspects of it. Um, the Internet Society has been around for a long time and been doing a fantastic job, as has ICANN, just really sort of grown into their space and done a great job now. Um, there's a lot of people who are very worried about what's going to happen with all that, but I actually think that a lot of the people that do Internet stuff are going to continue to do the right thing. Um, I don't know, that's pretty lame, but you know, I don't know, action today. I just, you know, I just marvel when I watch my 21 month old granddaughter pick up a cell phone and use the internet today, and it's just part of her life. And I just hope that that action can continue in every country all over the world so that we can continue to have a global economy and continue to have a really wonderful opportunity to mesh cultures and um, work with each other to make a better place.